hope you guys are ready because this is going to be the final chapter of what if Goku was raised by Wii. Thanks to Broly getting all of that ocean water out of the way, they were finally able to find a Dragon Ball. Yeah, without the Dragon Radar, it took Goku, Vegeta, and Broly an entire year just to find one. It's going to take a few more until they have them all in one place, and that's when everyone will finally be revived. But just as the gang is about to leave Oceana, Cell X shows up. And that's where the previous part ended. So if you guys somehow have not caught up on our entire What If Goku Was Raised By Wii storyline, the entire playlist as well as the previous chapter will be linked up at the top of the screen and down below in the comments. But as far as the story from here on out, well, let's hop right in. Broly is enraged at the sight of Cell X. I mean, last time he lost his own consciousness before even joining the battle, so naturally he's the one who wants a piece of Cell X the most right now. Goku and Vegeta are also not really pleased to see him either. Then there's the water that was forcibly blown out of the sea. It's still in the process of falling back down along with all of the toasted aquatic life. What's wrong with you guys? Just when life had started returning to the oceans, you do this, Selex comments? Says the dude that took out 8 billion people in a second, Goku says. Oh, was that a lot? Selex asks, and then he looks towards the ocean. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly look together with him, and what they see next has them in shock. The aquatic life, all of the species that should have been dead because of Broly's outburst are still alive, completely unharmed, every single one of them, and they just fall right back into the ocean with the water. Suddenly, massive amounts of tiny particles emerge out of the ocean and start merging. Within a couple of moments, these tiny particles completely take the appearance of Cell X. Good job, Cell X tells the other Cell. The two of them then shake hands and merge into one being again. Tell me, what? Just what are you, Goku asks. He couldn't contain his curiosity anymore. He had never seen anything like this. Me? I'm the collective combination of a ridiculous, almost infinite number of tiny cells. Get it? Cell X? The value of X is unknown. And each one of us is capable of independent thought. As long as even one cell remains, our existence will continue forever, Setlex laughs. Hearing this, Vegeta catches on to something. Is the number more than 8 billion? 8 billion? Well, that's the amount of cells I sent after that cooler guy. Is that number a lot, Setlex replies. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly call for a group meeting real quick, huddle up, and discuss everything they know about this mysterious creature so far. What now? This guy sounds beyond invincible, Vegeta says. I guess you're right. Sounds like we'll have to kill just an ungodly amount of tiny creatures that we can't even see, but I don't know. I'm still going to defeat this guy, Goku declares. This guy? More like we're up against an entire race. Forget it, Goku. Now, I'm not sure if Cell X is even to be blamed for all of those deaths anymore, Broly says. Exactly. I mean, it would be ludicrous to blame a newborn, wouldn't it? Cell X adds as he appears right over their shoulders. It just wasn't making any sense. There was no bloodlust or even negative energy oozing from Cell. Literally none. By the way, guys, I see the reason you blew up the ocean is to find that orange little ball, right? Well, here you go. Consider it a present from me. It has been a year since we last saw each other, after all, Cell X says, as he then hands them three more Dragon Balls and takes off. He flies straight into the stratosphere, stops for a moment, decides to go check out the sun. No way. That happened, didn't it? H how many Dragon Balls do we have right now, Goku asks? Well, five if we also include the one Kami and Mr. Popo were holding on to. Just two more to go when we're finally done, Broly says. Yeah, but these last two are going to be the hardest part. We'll have to scour the entire planet anyway because, well, these last two could be anywhere, Vegeta says, kind of killing the mood a little bit. They go back to the lookout to see if Kami has any clue as to where the last two Dragon Balls could be. Subsequently, Cell X is just observing the sun. So this is what caused that raging instability in that cooler guy. Glad I defused it before he would have blown up the entire planet without even realizing it, Cell X comments, and then he leaves. As for where he was going to go next, well, wherever the universe takes him, he's driven solely by his own curiosity and appreciation. Back at Earth, Kami honestly has no idea where they're going to find the last two Dragon Balls. Three star and seven star, huh? No clue, Mr. Popo states. Goku sighs. Guess we better start looking. Once again, Goku and the other two continue their daily routine. 
They search for the Dragon Balls in the morning and train at night. Another year passes by and they're still at it. Then two years, then three years. After four years of this constant daily routine, they finally found the seven star Dragon Ball in an ornament store in India. But the problem was the last Dragon Ball. By this point, they've already covered the entire globe, surely. What do you think, Kakarot? Should we start again, Vegeta asks. To search for a single Dragon Ball in this entire world without a radar. Whatever, man. I'm thinking about leaving this planet. Kami and Mr. Popo will eventually find the last Dragon Ball themselves and bring everyone back to life, Goku says. He takes another bite out of the dinosaur leg they just fried, but his teeth bite into something really hard and almost shattered. When they take a closer look, their jaws simultaneously drop. It was the three-star Dragon Ball in the leg of a dinosaur. Five years after beginning the search, they now have all seven. Shenron will be summoned, and all of the people who died on that day five years ago were brought back to life. Raditz and Nappa bulked up quite a bit. They trained and even participated in a tournament in the afterlife, but unlike Goku, Vegeta, and Broly, who are all 19 years old now, Raditz and Nappa are still the same age as when they died. Raditz is 15. As for Nappa, well, he was actually 34 right now. The good news is that they can now turn into Super Saiyans as well. Though, of course, while Goku, Vegeta, and Broly may not have had any major boost, the consistent effort they put in catapulted them several tiers ahead. Goku now has full command over his Ultra Instinct. Broly is no longer at the mercy of his anger and can control the Ikari state at will. Vegeta is still in Super Saiyan 2, but he knows he can feel it. Just one more piece and he'll be able to achieve a transformation that is truly unique to him. Meanwhile, Beerus who went to sleep again, hoping that the next time he wakes up, Goku is strong enough to be his successor, suddenly wakes up because of an uncomfortable twitch in his eye. Oh, guess it's finally time, he says. Glad that you're finally awake, my lord. The Supreme Kai seems to have invited you for a cup of tea. Shall we go, we states? Sure, let's hear him out. It won't be funny if that guy kicks the bucket, Beerus yawns. Later at the sacred world of the Kais, the Grand Supreme Kai and Shin greet Beerus and Whis as they arrive. Whoa, Grand Supreme Kai, you're still around, Beerus asks? Yes, well, Whis here separated me from Boo over 10 years ago. I've been hard at work fixing the mortal level of this universe ever since. Things have been good lately, too good in fact. And that's what we wanted to talk to you about, he replies. For the sake of context, the Grand Supreme Kai was absorbed by Boo over 5 million years ago, but after, Goku and Whis aided in resurrecting Boo so that Goku could have a face-off against a worthy adversary. Whis separated Grand Supreme Kai from Majin Buu, and thanks to his work, Universe 7 is no longer among the bottom tier universes. Okay, so what is this about, Beerus asks. I guess it's about Cell X. You failed to recruit him as your successor, Whis replies. You mean he's still around? I thought Goku would eventually handle this guy, Beerus asks. I mean, even you with your energy of destruction couldn't finish him off. Now that Cell X is around, it seems near impossible for most beings to take him out. He'll continue living until Universe 7 itself is destroyed, Whis explains. Beerus goes. Whis is exactly right. His durability makes Boo look like a joke, but you know what he's done in these past few years? He's been doing my job. Universe 7 is now in the top 5 universes in terms of mortal level and that's primarily because of him. He simply goes around visiting planets, fixes up the climate, and solves food problems. He even leaves behind a part of himself to make sure that the planet he saves starts prospering. If Majin Buu was the embodiment of chaos, Cell X personifies order. He's bringing order back to the universe in a way no one has ever done. Previously, only 28 planets had mortal life, but now that number is over 1,000. Listen and understand this, Lord Beerus. Before long, Cell X will rule this universe. You and I could very well become inferior to him, the Grand Supreme Kai declares. Meanwhile, on planet Earth, Vegeta faces off against Nappa and Raditz to try and see how far they've come up, but a few minutes later, a familiar face pulls up again. This time it's cooler, though. Where is Cell, he asks. Not sure why, Vegeta asks while bracing himself. He was gonna let him talk, but he very much intended to eliminate Cooler right here. This puny creature was manipulating my mind. 
he took over our family's planet trade business and undid all of the havoc we caused over the millennia. Every night, I'm plagued by nightmares. My family's legacy is effectively over, Kula declares. Seeing him acting so pathetic makes Vegeta laugh. The Saiyans are now at the top of the universe while the Frieza clan is going to be wiped out. Vegeta then unleashes Super Saiyan 2 and prepares to destroy Golden Cooler. Cooler could not ignore the lethal amounts of bloodlust coming from Vegeta, so he powers up as well, but with his spirit broken and his sense of self gone, he was just a mere shell of his former self. Even in Super Saiyan 2, Vegeta is able to absolutely thrash Golden Cooler who is barely fighting back. Those 10 or 20 straight punches to the face force him into recalling what happened, how he was going to use his own life force as collateral to wipe out all those monkeys. He was enraged. Cell X infiltrated his mind and took everything from him. His final goal, his career, his family's legacy, even his sense of self. As the last attempt to make things right, he braces himself to use his life fumes to kill these Saiyans. Suddenly, his power level is blown out of proportion, but Vegeta simply laughs. How lucky am I? I can now end your race for good. Saying this, Vegeta releases all the stress that once held him back as he releases everything and enters a state of flow. He himself doesn't realize it, but Nappa and Raditz see his hair start shifting between the colors of yellow and blue. He was almost glitching. Vegeta proceeds to pummel Cooler, I mean he chops him into tiny pieces and then blows him away with a gigantic key blast. Cooler had already used up all of his life. His consciousness faded away and the countless pieces of his body just fall to the ground. It wasn't a fight, it wasn't even an execution. This was just Vegeta terminating a broken man, it was almost embarrassing. That was cruel, I, I mean amazing. That was amazing Vegeta, Raditz says. Nappa claps. What was that aggression? I didn't quite feel like myself during this battle, Vegeta says. This is when we cut back to the sacred planet of the Kais. Fine by me, I can just relax and chill until someone strong enough to rival me shows up. Let's just let Selex handle our responsibilities, Beerus states. Are you sure, the Kais asks? Dead sure. Keep observing him though, I'm gonna go see Goku for amusement, Beerus states. He gets up and leaves along with Whis. Beerus truly could not care who was in charge of the universe as long as it didn't directly affect him. At the same time, Goku and Broly are in the middle of a little sparring match themselves. How are you planning on finding Cell X, Broly asks while landing a kick. I'll wait for Whis to come and get me. Until then, let's just get as strong as we possibly can, Goku replies while blocking that kick. They soon pause their match though as Beerus and Whis appear. Impressive, you sure have grown a lot since I last saw you, kid. Think you can beat me now, Beerus says? Well, let's try and see, Goku declares with a straight look on his face. Vegeta, who was on his way to talk to Goku about his new transformation, speeds up when he notices that familiar presence. He still remembers that the one who ordered Frieza to destroy planet Vegeta was him. Beerus looks from the corner of his eye and sees Vegeta straight up sprinting towards him. In the next moment, Vegeta had already unleashed a major kick on Beerus, but he blocked it with just one finger. That was pretty rude of you. Were you raised to greet people like this, Beerus asks. This is the son of King Vegeta, we states. I must say, he has a lot of potential himself, definitely a lot more than his father. Oh? And how is that King Vegeta doing, Beerus asks. This sick joke would trigger something inside Vegeta, an aggression that had been lying dormant this entire time, a rage that could no longer be suppressed. Then a blue aura emerges around him as he enters that Super Saiyan 2 state. Vegeta had finally done it, the Super Saiyan rage state. He kicks Beerus again, but this one packs a little bit of a punch. Beerus was gonna block it, but his body instinctively just dodges it at the last moment. Now, Beerus is actually pretty confused by all of this. That thing that we thought was a sick joke earlier was actually sincerity. Beerus just kind of forgot that Planet Vegeta was more or less partially his fault. Whatever, I'm not gonna let this brat get away with disrespecting me, Beerus says. He braces himself to erase Vegeta out of existence, but the moment he conjures up that Hakai, Goku grabs his wrist, and he was in his perfected Ultra Instinct state. He decides to ignore Goku and finish off Vegeta first, but Broly grabs his other arm. Ah, uh, what a pain. You should have taught these kids some manners, Whis, Beerus says. 
This is when he propels all three of them away by simply unleashing his aura. Listen, Beerus begins. How about this? I'll let you all live for now if you treat me to the finest cuisine on this planet. Even though Vegeta was still in his rage form, the three honestly had no other option but to agree, so it would then meet at the lookout where Beerus is offered a full course meal. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly couldn't help themselves, so they also joined in. Yeah, these four were at each other's throats moments ago, but the simple act of sharing a meal together has honestly diffused a few situations. Pretty satisfied with the meal so far, Beerus would then look over at Whis and ask, well, what should we do? I was only interested in Goku at first, but these other two aren't half bad either, Beerus asks. Well, think about it, Lord Beerus, Whis replies. Universe 7 is rising in the rankings fast. Now, if we can just polish up a few warriors, we'll be able to do something that has never happened. We'll be able to top Universe 1 and Universe 12. The Grand Priest would be pleased, Whis replies. Ha, <laughs> you stole the words right out of my mouth. I was thinking the same thing, yes. I'm a genius, Beerus states, and then he looks at the Saiyans. Well, you guys want to train under me, he says. Vegeta would clench his fist and grin. It would be an honor, but do keep in mind that my intention would be to surpass you. As for Goku, he simply replies, You say that, but who knows? I might already be stronger than you, Lord Beerus. Beerus would just laugh. Listen, kid, as long as I'm the god of destruction of Universe 7, I cannot lose. Not to you. Not to sell X, but I'll humor you. Beerus would then immediately enter his ultra ego state and fly off into the sky. Goku would follow him next. There, the two of them have a brief face off. Goku is able to dodge almost all of Beerus' attacks. His mastery over ultra instinct is truly commendable, but his attacks just aren't strong enough to do any damage to Beerus. On the other hand, just one hit from Beerus is enough to do some serious damage to Goku. The battle continues on for half an hour or so, and it was a terrific exchange between the God of Destruction and the current strongest mortal in existence. But Goku eventually runs out of steam and begins falling down into the atmosphere. His body starts burning, but Beerus would catch him and take him back to the lookout. Phenomenal work, Whis. This kid could take over my job any day, Beerus comments. He was delighted. Finally, interesting time. Beerus asks Broly if he wants to join them too, but Broly explains that he was going to take care of his adoptive parents, marry a proper woman, and give them grandchildren. Yeah, very well then. I look forward to seeing your kid as well. I'm sure he'll be one hell of a character, Beerus states. Meanwhile, a portion of Cell X has entered Universe 6. Since Universe 6 and 7 exist as a pair, he realized that they have to be in perfect sync or it'll be all for naught. Just like a virus, he was going to spread far and beyond and bring each place he visits to his absolute optimal peak. Goku and Vegeta say goodbye to Broly, Raditz, and Nappa for the time being, as it was finally time for the two of them to receive the same kind of training as Lord Beerus. Well, Beerus begins as the four of them prepare to leave. This universe would have been a very different place right now if I wasn't asked to babysit Goku. It works in strange ways, doesn't it? Whis would laugh, and that would mark the end of what if Goku was raised by Whis? Or maybe this is just the first arc.